briefly leave the world of stones, but we'll be back. So one more talk after this. I'm going to talk with you a little bit today about uh, robotic kidney surgery, um, particularly alternative access approaches for nephron sparing. I have some uh, disclosures. I'm on the scientific advisory board for intuitives. So that's an important one that's relevant to this uh, content. All right, so we talk about nephron sparing, and we know that these tumors come in a lot of flavors and a lot of locations, and we can approach them a variety of different ways, right? We can approach them retroperitoneally, we can approach them transperitoneally, and they have their pluses and minuses in both cases. In many cases, though, what you're seeing is a tremendous skew in what surgeons are doing towards the transperitoneal approach to these tumors. Uh, and part of that is very surprising to me in the sense that prior to the development of the SP robot, only about 10% of the cases were being done uh, retroperitoneoscopically. Why is that? Well, partly it's related to sort of the awkwardness of doing multi-port retroperitoneoscopic surgery with patients in flank. Uh, you have to put the patients in this sort of complex <coughs> position, spend a lot of time doing their positioning, and you've got to use an access balloon to get your space. And truthfully, when you look at what this is very good for, it's great for upper pole and posterior tumors, not so great for lower pole, medial tumors, or anterior tumors. So it's a technique that can be applied in expert hands to a wide range of things, but in most the hands of most mortals, uh, it's really a posterior tumor approach. Now, what about this tumor? Okay, here we've got a, uh, a tumor in the lower pole. It's up against the renal pelvis. It's not a great approach for a multi-port uh, retro. In this case, uh, it's an okay approach to go at this transperitoneally because you're coming from the front, uh, but then you're accepting some of the downsides of the transperitoneal approach. And of course, what about a patient like this who has a massive incision in their abdomen? Can this be done transperitoneally? Sure but you're gonna invest a lot of time and have some increased risk associated with doing that. So, you know, ideally we'd like to offer a regionalized surgery to the majority of our patients who need nephron sparing. We want them to go home sooner. We want them to avoid ileus. We wanna approach the kidney away from that hostile abdomen, away from lysing adhesions. We wanna avoid all that time consuming stuff that has nothing to do with your surgery other than accessing the kidney. So we wanna get retroperitoneal access to tumors anywhere in the kidney. And the truth is that the combination of these two technologies and approaches has really changed this. It's, it's completely revolutionized what we're doing. The SP robot combined with low anterior access. And I'm gonna focus on low anterior access today. This approach has basically transformed my practice and I've been in practice for 20 years. Um, I would have never expected that to happen, but it really has changed uh, how we do things. You had some interesting slide things today. So uh, basically, uh, it's tempting to think that this is a cosmesis problem, right? That we should just do single port surgery because we can do things cosmetically. And we've been doing single site donor surgery for years and we get great cosmetic results. Uh, and you can do the same thing with partial nephrectomy. You can do transperitoneal partial nephrectomy through the umbilicus through a very small incision. But I think in general, and we've kind of learned this lesson from the donor world, this cosmetic aspect is a relative paper tiger in the setting of most patients who need partial nephrectomy. There are some where it's a big issue, uh, but for the vast majority, that's not what's driving your decision making. They would rather get better faster, they'd rather get out of the hospital faster uh, than have you know, a, an umbilical incision. So really it's about regionalization. The magic is about regionalization. As Dr. Slayman mentioned earlier, you know, we started out doing everything outside the abdomen. Right? We got all our organs are outside the abdomen, outside of cystectomy and diversion. But then laparoscopy drove us into the abdomen and we kind of got stuck there for a couple decades. And the SP robot is really helping to move us back into that regionalized, uh, regionalized role. So that's really where the magic of this is. Now that, a lot of that is driven by low anterior access and really the three pioneers in this area were Simone Crivellaro, Jihad Kauk, and Udahar Ahmed who really kind of got this going. It originally came from the pediatric world and then transitioned into the adult world. And it's essentially access to the uh, kidney through an incision kind of similar to where you'd approach the appendix down in the lower abdomen. It allows you to approach the kidney up the axis of the ureter. And in retrospect, it's really not something we ever thought about doing. It's actually quite difficult to do this if you have a multi-port system, 
uh, but it allows you to simply shift one direction or the other and approach either the posterior or the anterior aspect of the kidney. So this is a very versatile approach. It allows us to access tumors in the kidney in any location. Posterior, anterior, medial, lateral, they can all be accessed this way, uh, which is great. It meets some of our criteria. And it has some positioning advantages. We do not have to put these patients into flank position. We don't have to waste 20 or 30 minutes doing that. Um, we don't have to crack the bed. They can just be placed supine and everything can be done that way. So it's really a very potent and kind of addicting approach to get to the kidney. But the thing is, I told you about all these advantages to this approach, and yet it's still not done that often. So this is just a poll that I did for fun on X. This is about six months ago, about 2,500 views, 100 people responded. And you can see that for an upper pole partial nephrectomy, about 64% oh, are still gonna do this multi-port trans and only, what, 6% were gonna do uh, a low anterior axis approach. So I think there is a lot to be gained by learning about this approach and understanding its advantages because we can offer that to our patients and it's not really being done that much yet. Well, wow. great. So basically, this is an approach that uh, you know, allows us to attack any kidney from any location all from the same point of access. And really the SP makes this the easy approach uh, to do that. So my practice, as I said, I was in practice about 18 years before I started using the SP robot. And in that time I was sort of a dabbler in retroperitoneal surgery. I was probably doing about 15% retroperitoneal, generally under some protest. I kind of like to call myself a transperitoneal curmudgeon, which I've said before. And I would have told you in those days that anything can be done transperitoneal. There's no real need to go retroperitoneal. Um, and I really just did it in the difficult posterior tumors or hostile abdomen patients. But since going to SP and primarily through the use of low anterior access, you know, in the past couple of years, I've gone to about 80% retro. So, and it's really revolutionized what we're doing. Um, our patients are really going home a lot faster. I'll show you some data on that. They have much less in the way of restrictions in the postoperative period, and they definitely have less postoperative pain and lower narcotic requirements, especially because of the low anterior access. This is just a, a, an example. So if we look at the last 50, so the last 50 patients, wow, well, uh, the last 50 patients that had um, uh, the surgery, only about 65% of them went home within 48 hours. And uh, for those patients, about 20% went home uh, after four days, which is a little shocking, but actually the reality of what these patients are doing. Uh, but if you do SP retro, about, 90% uh, go home within 48 hours and about 70% go in uh, within the first zero to one day. These slides actually work great, by the way, on every other computer that I've used. <laughs> it's like the 10th time I've given this talk. Okay, so uh, again, big difference, right? And this is an organic change uh, that is not related to sort of a systematic decision to discharge these people earlier. All right. If you're doing retro surgery already, you can do multi-port flank approaches as sort of a walking before you run approach to this uh, system. Um, you can use an assistant port if you want. Um, that can be beneficial early on in your experience. Um, and again, uh, there's no need for full flank position for these cases. You can put the patient supine on a bump and just approach it through the flank if that's what you prefer to do. Um, flank approach, you know, really this is gonna look a lot more like what you're used to seeing if you do multi-port retro. You're coming right up onto the psoas muscle. You're gonna get right to the artery fairly quickly. And then, um, you know, you can access uh, the, the artery for clamping. And then, you know, in this case, this is an anterior tumor. You can see that it's quite easy to get to the anterior aspect of the kidney, not as easy with multiport retro. Um, but here we are resecting an anterior tumor uh, without too much difficulty. So again, flank approach, very reasonable. It's just not as versatile as the low anterior. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for these low anterior access approaches. Uh, hopefully keep in mind that the SP robot is designed to work in a cylinder, right? So when you go in from the low anterior access, you follow the cylinder up to the kidney. And uh, that's nice because all the stuff outside the cylinder is not being affected. And I think perhaps that has something to do with why these patients look so good postoperatively is because you're doing a lot less trauma by focusing on just that cylinder that you're working through. Um, there are a variety of options you can use to do these cases. You can do standard uh, full single site. You can add an assistant port if you'd like. 
or you can do a sidecar. Um, not my favorite approach, but again, it can be useful in certain situations and different people have different opinions. If you're going to do a pure single site uh, nephron sparing procedure, you're gonna need some additional adjuncts, including a remote suction system, perhaps the ROSI is a good one, or you can use an NG, NG tube connected to uh, wall suction. And then you need special bulldogs if you're gonna apply them with the SP robot because the strength limitations of the system. So there are bulldogs made by Scanlon that are low pressure that you can apply with the system. The original description of how to do low interaxis is this. You would do a one third, two thirds approach and put your incision in that location. Uh, we've modified that to the point now where we just use two fingers on the hip. And two fingers on the hip make your incision pretty much works in everybody. Uh, it is uh, better for larger body habituses. It's better for uh, staying out of the peritoneum. So this is kind of the trick to make that a little bit easier. <clears throat> okay, so when you make your incision, um, keep in mind it's not limited to that exact location. You can shift up or you can shift down. Um, and that helps you if you have a taller person or a shorter person. Um, keep in mind it's tempting also to make a keyhole uh, when you go into the retroperitoneum. So try to avoid that. You don't want to create a keyhole to work through. So you have a larger incision with a tiny keyhole at the end. Um, try to spread a little bit more to make more space. And then probably the most important thing is always point towards the contralateral shoulder. Okay, so when you start the case, don't do this. Don't point toward the uh, actual kidney. You want to point toward the contralateral shoulder and that's going to keep you directly on target with the hilum. That's going to speed things up for you quite a bit. Also, just keep in mind that the lateral aspect of the mid pole is actually the farthest thing from you when you're coming at low interaxis. So a, a tumor that might look kind of like a chip shot on a traditional approach may be a little bit harder to reach through low interaxis. Here you are going up the ureter and there's our tumor. You can see that the mid pole is further than the upper pole in this situation. Uh, from your axis. So you got to understand that if you're going to go at that and it's a sticky fat situation, it's going to be a little bit more of a battle. And that might be a case where a, a lateral or a flank approach might be better. Again, this is just another example, relatively straightforward looking tumor, kind of lateral, not too, not too exciting. Um, but you know, it's a long way from the lower pole axis. So from the low inter axis, you can get there eventually, uh, but it's, it's a little bit further than you might expect and it requires more mobilization. So again, this one we did just fine through low interaxis, but this is one where you might consider a flank axis. Um, on the left side, things can be a little bit more disorienting. Um, just keep in mind that you, the orientation of the renal artery may look a little strange to you. You're going up the psoas as kind of your ramp to get to the hilum, and it's quite easy to get trapped into that space between the quadratus and the psoas. That's probably the most common early mistake when doing these cases. And it's just important to recognize it early on and get yourself out of trouble and just don't panic in that situation. Here's an example where we did the wrong thing, right? Where we looked at the kidney rather than at the uh, contralateral shoulder. And as you can see, we're, here we are in there desperately looking to find the psoas muscle. Did we find the psoas muscle? Um, well, you know, and probably not. As you go forward, you're gonna see there's muscle to the right. This is a right side case. Um, that's not supposed to be there, right? So that's the psoas muscle. That whole process took about five minutes and you're back on track again. You get back over the psoas muscle and head up the hilum. If you follow this quadratus, you're just gonna to get to the diaphragm. And this looks like it would be hard to do and that you would never make this mistake, but you're gonna make it the first 10 times you do this until you're comfortable. Um, but it's really easy to get yourself out of trouble and figure it out. Just kind of be on the lookout and position the arm of the robot pointing toward the contralateral shoulder. Here's another one. Here we are going in, looking for the psoas muscle. And this is a somewhat more obese patient and we're working and working and working and starting to feel a little less confident as we're working. And uh, we're gonna look, where's the muscle? Where's the muscle? And oh, is that the muscle? No, not the muscle. <coughs> That's the kidney, right? So just recognize that. It's easy to get anterior to the kidney. That's one of the strengths of the low anterior approach, right? You can do anterior and posterior tumors. It's easy to get yourself out of trouble. Just back up, go into the right plane, find your target. So you haven't wasted much time. But if you waste 45 minutes just driving around lost, that's gonna frustrate you. So again, just be on the lookout for finding the psoas and making sure that that landmark is clear uh, when you do these cases. The other thing that can sometimes be a little bit challenging is that the low anterior axis comes in pretty far away from the kidney in a person with a large retroperitoneal envelope. You can see in this case, there's a very long distance 
from the axis point to the hilum. And so we've gotten in the habit of looping these vessels, not so much for controlling them, but just to provide us with a little bit of a breadcrumb trail to get us back to the hilum. And that can prove very helpful in patients that are very heavy or have large retroperitoneums. It can speed you up and get you there much quicker. Remember, you've got to deploy your arms into the patient. Um, the bending of the elbows is really important. You don't have that wristed instrument that you have uh, with the XI robot. Um, and again, you can deploy your arms in the bubble, but you ideally want to deploy them in the patient, so sometimes you need to squash the bubble to get yourself a little closer to the actual target. We use a lot of gauze in these cases because I like to use all three arms when I'm doing the tumor, and so we'll pack gauze and position the kidney in such a way that it is held in a nice position of advantage so that all three arms can be used simultaneously. Um, really, the power of this system for doing partial nephrectomy is in the use of all three arms at the same time. Um, and you want to set up a situation where you have all three arms in the field working, so you don't want one arm dedicated to holding the kidney in a position of function. Again, these cases you might think uh, would be slower, but actually they're quite a bit faster than traditional transperitoneal procedures. This is just sped up, but basically unedited. And you can see we've just entered, there's the ureter. We turn the corner and go right up the psoas muscle. In this case, it took us about eight minutes from doc to hyler isolation. We had clamped by 22 minutes and we're done in less than 60 minutes. I can't do that with a transperitoneal procedure. There's just too much stuff that has nothing to do with the nephron smearing that you have to do. So efficiency can be very high with these procedures. And if you think about it from the point of view of what you're doing, so again, this is gonna be difficult because the slides are all messed up. But basically, if we compare transperitoneal and retro, retro saves you a little bit of time but you're wasting time during the positioning, okay? When you go to low anterior, you're getting the benefits of both. Quick positioning, quick access, similar times in terms of tumor resection, very quick exit, and so you end up saving quite a bit of time in terms of these cases. It's very, that's very positive. All right, if you're getting started with this, think about cases that are good as a starting point. It's much less important where the tumor is and much more important what the retroperitoneum looks like. So in this case, these are, that's a posterior tumor, here's an anterior tumor. Those are both excellent first cases, early cases in this. Uh, this is not such a great case. Once the tumor gets up to a really large size, it can be challenging. And then certainly the patient with the massive retroperitoneal envelope, particularly in male patients with a lot of sticky fat, uh, that can be a real big problem. All right, so in, in recap, I've showed you that this low anterior approach to the kidney can be very versatile and regionalizing your partial nephrectomies. It's really shifted my whole nephron sparing practice um, over the past couple of years uh, in a sort of surprising way. And there are some variations that you can do to kind of ease your way into it. You can do flank access, you can do an extra port if you'd like. Um, and then I showed you some tips and tricks to avoid pitfalls early on. And I think we just have to keep in mind that this approach gives us two things. It gives us benefits in terms of patient morbidity. They go home faster, they're more comfortable. And it also gives us maximized operative efficiency, which is good for everyone. So thank you very much.